we are continuing our general embryology session this is part 5 chapter 4 second week of development by laminar germ disk foundation module part 5 objectives we have by laminar germ disk formation and abnormal implantation so for the overview remember that the second week is also called week of twos so remember the word great calm there are two words for g we have germ layer that is from embryo blast for t we have trophoblast that divides into two layer for c we have cavities that two cavities are formed and for the m we have mesoderms that is extra embryonic mesoderms so two germ layers are hypoblast and epiblast two trophoblast layer as syncytio trophoblast and cytotrophoblast two cavities are embryonic cavity and primitive yolk sac and extra embryonic mesoderms are splanchnic mesoderm and somatic mesoderm now we'll discuss in detail first we will go with the concept then we will look at the retention techniques so at the 8th day of development blastocyst is partially embedded into endometrial stroma here is the endometrial stroma of the uterus and blastocyst is partially embedded outer cell mass develops trophoblast that develops placenta as the outer has o and t so trophoblast t and o trophoblast differentiate into two layers which i told you earlier that is cytotrophoblast that is the inner cell of the mononucleated cell and then there is a syncytio trophoblast multinucleated zone without distinct cell here is the cytotrophoblast with the mononucleated cells with the single layer and here is the syncytio trophoblast multinucleated zone without distinct boundaries cytotrophoblast is a small spurt it is the inner layer syncytio trophoblast is a long word it is the outer layer mitotic cells are found only in the cytotrophoblast component not in the syncytio trophoblast this cell of the cytotrophoblast divide and migrate into syncytio trophoblast where they fuse and lose their individual membranes and form the layer of syncytio trophoblast next as we discussed in the previous video inner cell mass give rise to the embryo blast e and, e and r are for the embryo blast so embryo blast also differentiates into two layers hypoblast layers of cuboidal cell adjacent to blastocyst epiblast high columnar cell adjacent to amniotic cavity here is the epiblast that is in the blue and here is the amniotic cavity inside the epiblast the here is the hypoblast that is below the epiblast and blastocyst cavity is between the cytotrophoblast and the hypoblast next is the tip epi means above in the biological terms above we have pillars so these are the pillars E sounds like A, so epiblast surrounds the amniotic cavity. Here, the pillars are like columnar cells, which is the tall standing cells. So the columnar cells are from the epiblast, and E sounds like A, so epiblast surrounds the amniotic cavity. This is very important. Next, the word is hypoblast, and hypo is below, and below we have the floor, and we have small cuboidal cell here. The tiles which resemble the cuboidal cells hypoblast has h and it looks like b so it surrounds the blastocyst cavity in the start together epiblast and hypoblast form the flat disk or they are called bilaminar germ disk here is the bilaminar germ disk at the same time small cavity appears within the epiblast which enlarges to become amniotic cavity here is the epiblast and small cavity appears between it and this is called the amniotic cavity and here is the hypoblast below the epiblast and both of them are called flat disk or bilaminar germ disk epiblast adjacent to cytotrophoblast are called amnioblast endometrial stroma adjacent to implantation site is highly vascular glands become large secrete glycogen and mucus as it is in the secretory phase it is more glandular and secretes mucus and it is fit for the implantation next we have day 9 blastocyst is deeply embedded in the endometrium and penetration defect in the surface epithelium is closed by the fibrin coagulation like the wound healing so basically in the wound healing there is fibrin coagulation fibrin deposits like this and it heals the wound so this is also happening when there is blastocyst embedded in the endometrium so it heals by the fibrin coagulation there are two poles one is the embryonic pole where is the embryo and other is the ab embryonic pole where there is no embryo so at the embryonic pole trophoblast show development vacuoles appear in the syncytium vacuoles fuse and become large lacunae this is lacunar stage so here are the formation of the trophoblastic lacunae in the syncytio trophoblast the outer layer of the trophoblast at the ab embryonic pole flattened cell of from the hypoblast from thin silomic hesus membrane that lines the inner surface of the cytotrophoblast here are the cytotrophoblast and there is the thin membrane hesus membrane or 
exosilomic membrane from the hypoblast that appears. This membrane with the hypoblast lines the exosilomic cavity or primitive yolk sac. So the hypoblast together with this exosilomic or the Hazard's membrane forms the primitive yolk sac. Here is the primitive yolk sac, the new cavity that appears. So tip to remember exosilomic cavity is equal to egg cavity and or this is also called primitive yolk sac. So egg as yolk. Next is day 11 and 12. Blastocyst is completely embedded in endometrial stroma. Surface epithelium covers original defect by fibrin coagulation as we discussed earlier. Lacunar spaces in syncytium form intercommunicating network at embryonic pole, not at the ab embryonic pole. So here the at embryonic pole, the blood becomes to fill in the lacunar surface of the syncytiotrophoblast. Syncytiotrophoblast penetrate into stroma, endothelial lining of maternal capillaries, congested and dilated called sinusoids. Here are the sinusoids that are blood filled. Syncytial lacunae become continuous with the sinusoids. Blood flow through it establishing placental circulation. So here is the placenta from the syncytiotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast and from the uterus we have the circulation of the sinusoids. So we have placental circulation established. In the meantime, new population of the cell appears between the inner surface of cytotrophoblast. Here is the cytotrophoblast and this is the inner surface and outer surface of exosilomic cavity. So here is the exosilomic cavity. So new cells appear. Here are the new cells appearing between them. These cells are derived from the yolk sac. Here is the yolk sac that we discussed earlier. They form loose connective tissue extra embryonic mesoderm which fills the spaces between the trophoblast eventually and exosilomic membrane internally. So these are the cells of extra embryonic mesoderm. Soon large cavities develop in extra embryonic mesoderm. They fuse and form extra embryonic cavity or chorionic cavity. Here the extra embryonic cavity is appearing and it fu fuse and form a single cavity. Here they fuse and form a single large cavity. Extra embryonic mesoderms develop into extra cavity which is extra embryonic or chorionic cavity or extra embryonic or chorionic coelom. Coelom is also called cavity. Here is the extra embryonic cavity or later called as chorionic cavity. This space surrounds primitive yolk sac and amniotic cavity except where germ disc is connected to trophoblast by connecting stroke. Here is the point where germ disc is connected to trophoblast by connecting stroke and there is no cavity or spacing between them. This portion is called connecting stroke where germ disc connects to the trophoblast. Now in this extra embryonic mesoderm we have two layers. One is called extra embryonic somatic mesoderm other is called extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm so extra embryonic somatic mesoderm is lining cytotrophoblast and amnion here is the cytotrophoblast here is the extra amniotic somatic mesoderm and it also lines the amnion this inner is the amnion it continues like this extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm is the line covering the yolk sac here is the yolk sac in between and this is the extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm. So extra embryonic mesoderm tips. First is the somatic. So we have spellings S-O-M-A-T-I-C. For T-C we have cytotrophoblast lining and for A we have amnion cavity lining. For splanchnic mesoderm we have mnemonic splashing egg yolk. So surrounding the yolk sac. Here again around the yolk sac we have splanchnic mesoderm. Again around the amnion and cytotrophoblast we have somatic mesoderm. Decidual reaction. This is basically endometrial preparation for the pregnancy, which is endometrial thickening. Cells of the endometrium become polyhydral loaded with the glycogen and lipid tissue is edematous. These changes are decidual reaction. This is first confined to the site of implantation and soon occurs throughout the endometrium.